This episode of Chasing the Dollar is proudly brought to you by Sporting Bet. There's no better bet than a sporting bet. Hello and welcome along to Chasing the Dollar, brought to you by Sporting Bet. Ben Damon's my name. I'm joined by Adam Pengilly, who is absolutely flying after a huge Saturday night last week on the punt. The best bet, the best value, the quad all got up. You're flying. Did you follow us in? I didn't. <laughs> well, it was right, a rough ben. week the week before, so I got off. Yeah, here. admittedly it was a very terrible week at Wentworth Park the week before, and you got off, which was fair enough. But we uh, we bounced back to some sort of form last Saturday night. We're looking forward to a couple of group races at, uh, at heats of Chairman's Cup at Wentworth Park on Saturday night. We're also going to preview the Sporting Bet Dapto Megastar Prelude, so looking forward to finding a few more winners. Yeah, we certainly are. 970 was the best value, so there's plenty of uh, good cash to be won if you followed Adam last week. Let's see how he goes this week. And as he mentioned, we are going to kick it off at Dapto on Thursday night. It is is the Sporting Bet Megastar Prelude. It's a very nice looking race as well. Where are you going at Dapta? Can you go with number three, Amadeus Strikes, Ben? I know Fast Archer was absolutely brilliant last week and really good to last, but I'm just going to think that Amadeus Strikes might present a little bit more better value on, on Thursday night. The discrepancy in the market between her and Fast Archer I think would be fairly significant. She's such a consistent greyhound, and even though Fast Archer has drawn pretty well between two say so beginners, has drawn to land on the bunny, I think if you go back last month and have a look at Amadeus Strikes and see what she did to Fast Archer in the heat of the New South Wales National Sprint Championship. She drew exactly out, uh, directly outside him on that occasion, stalked him into the back straight, moved three wide on the, on the top of the home corner and then blew him, blew him away. I think he, she can probably do that again on Thursday night at a decent price. So happy to make her my top pick. Dany Banquet goes in for second. She's ideally drawn out wide on the track. Was really gallant behind Fast Archer last week. Should be there and thereabouts again. Speaking of Fast Archer, he's going to go in for third. A track specialist at Dapto who has plenty of early speed. I just think a couple of the these might lob close enough to give him trouble over the last 50 metres. I'm going to throw in the Victorian number one crump for fourth, who should get a nice run off the rails, but my numbers are three, seven, two and one. And next week we'll be having a look at the big race at Dapto, the first Group 1 as well to be held at Dapto. So tune in next week on Chasing the Dollar. Now let's move on to Wentworth Park and the first of the Chairman's Cup heats. It falls outside the quaddy legs. It is race number four on the program. What did you make of it? Yeah, it's by far the weaker of the two Chairman's Cup heats, Ben, but I'm going to go with two interstaters on top and number one, Belle Haven, is going to be our top pick. She's been freshened for this series after getting beat at a really short price in the state final of the Tasmanian National Distance Championships. She's been Proven at Wentworth Park, has a really rough hope drawn on her outside. From an inside draw, if she can just lob somewhere in the first three or four going into that first turn, I think she'll be far too strong late, and it's probably a pretty decent betting proposition for me. So number one, Bell Haven on top. The big danger looks to be number seven, Lucy Wise, who has really been elevated through the grades and distance early in her career. Her last start showed that she's a stayer of some promise, but there must be just some sort of query having her first start at Wentworth Park, so she goes in for second. Diamond Lucy was really impressive last week and was good to us at Wentworth Park, but this looks like an altogether different task on Saturday night. And number three, Little Grey has a big motor and should be able to qualify for the final. But I'm pretty keen on number one, Bell Haven, in the first of the Chairman's Cup heats. All right, let's move to race number five on the program. It is the second of the heats of the Chairman's Cup, and it's a nice-looking race this as well. Now, Corborn Looney's the one that Adam's going to tip us. What about the record at Wentworth Park? Has won four out of six with a second. Overall, career-wise, has only won nine out of 32 starts. Has really found a home over the 7.20 at Wentworth. Yeah, she's really excelling at Wentworth Park at the moment, Ben. This is an absolutely cracking Chairman's Cup heat. I'd probably suggest that four or five of these greyhounds, if they were in the first take, that'd start favourite for sure. So one or two of them are going to be unlucky to miss out on the final. But like you mentioned, I'm I'm going to go with number seven, Corborn Looney. Absolutely sensational last week, winning, even though the track was on the fastish side. You had to be super impressed with her time. She's such a professional greyhound to me. She just does everything right. She jumps well, sticks to the paint, is really strong late, and quite crucially in this race, it doesn't look like there's a whole heap of early speed. If she can get out in the first two, go into that first turn and dominate this race, I think she might be hard to run down. So number seven, Corborn Looney is going to be our top pick. Number three, Smart Valentino, the New South Wales and National Distance Champion resumes after a short freshen up from winning that series at the Meadows. If he settles handy enough, he's going to take a power of beating late, but I'm only going to include him for second. Gradence is the real interesting runner for me, Ben. He's coming back to the staying trip after a couple of goes at the sprint trip. With a little bit of extra zip in his legs, he might be the knockout runner for mine, so keep a close watch on him and betting on Saturday night. And the number five, the Victorian Proven Impala, also has claims. He's going to play really wide in our quaddy, but my numbers are seven, three, four and five. 
OK, let's move on to race number six on the program. This is over the 520 metres there at Wentworth Park on Saturday night. What did you find? Yeah, intriguing little race, Ben. I'm going to go with number one, Rock Pepper. She looks like a greyhound of promise. She was pretty impressive off an inside alley last week when presented with a charm run. Stuck to the paint and got the job done. I think she draw, she's drawn pretty well again. Should be able to lob in a handy position. She's not the fastest beginner, but with a wide-running, sluggish beginner on her outside, she should be able to lob handy into that first turn and be pretty strong late. So happy to make her my top pick. Number three, Maya Karoma was brilliant getting the fly from an outside alley last week. Looks suitably drawn in, the bo in box three and has a decent chance of winning this race as well. Number five, Lux Change goes in for third. Turned in a couple of pretty decent performances at the Gardens in a heat and consolation final of the Blacktop Series. Her early speed will put her in this race. And number two, Kobe J actually won the consolation of the Blacktop Series last week. But looks a little awkwardly drawn to mind, but I'm pretty keen on number one, Rock Pepper. Let's look at race number seven on the program. This is the third leg of the Quaddy. It is over the 5.20 there at Wenny on Saturday night as well. Now, you're going for Gowdy. It has a very good record of late. The one fell a couple of starts back, but came back to win it now or last start. Yeah, just draw a line through that heat in the blacktop series, Ben. He was a little bit tardy away, drew on the outside. Muster some really good speed going into the first turn, but just got squeezed on the outside and fell. Just completely forget that run. Bounced back to winning form at now or last week. Draw on the inside. There's very little speed in this race, which make his task a hell of a lot easier. I think it's a pretty good bet on Saturday night. So from the rails draw, Gowdy should be able to get the cash for us. Fun for all looks the main danger, I reckon. One in sub-30 seconds last week. Has plenty of early speed and we carving across from the outside. So it goes in for second. JB Rock's going to appreciate the steep drop in grade and on recent starts should be able to converge on them late. So it goes in for third. And Honey Chicken has won for the exotic. Spelling out with one, seven, eight and six. And that'll take us to the last leg of the Quaddy race number eight at Wenny Park on Saturday night. Let's have a look at the field for this one because there's a bit of a theme that runs through it. Pale Ale's in there, Very Bitter and Booze Hound. Should be sponsored by a beer company, this one. Dragon this race is going to have a pretty popular trifecta by the time race eight rolls around on Saturday night. I think there'll be a fair few punters leaning towards Booze Hound, Very Bitter and Pale Ale. And guess what? I found them all in my top four somewhere. We're going to make number six Booze Hound the top pick here. I know Very Bitter was extremely impressive winning in fast time at Wentworth Park on Monday night. There's going to be a fair discrepancy in the market for this race and I think just purely happy to play Booze Hound on the better value. Drawn outside, Very Bitter. They're both wide runners. Booze Hound did return to his best box manners last week and really rushed to towards the lead at the first turn. If he can do that again and somehow cross very bitter, this race is going to take on a completely different complexion. And like I mentioned earlier, the better value. Happy to have a good lash at him on Saturday night. As mentioned earlier, very bitter was sensational winning at Wentworth Park on Monday night. We'll probably start a pretty short favourite in this race, but I just think it might be worth betting around him. I just, don't, I just think Bruce Hound's going to present much better, better value on Saturday night. Miss Chicky was a well-beaten second to uh, very bitter on that race on Monday night and could be a potential leader here from a suitable draw. And going to throw in number one, Pale Al for fourth has drawn pretty well here and has claims as well. But I'm pretty keen on Booze Hound at a bit of value. All right, so that is a look at Wentworth Park as well as Dapto. Now it is time to get the pens ready because Adam is going to give us his best bet on the program. Yeah, it might be a bit tougher this week, Ben. I'm going to go race seven, number one, Gowdy. He's been really good for him late, and Steve White has found a pretty moderate race from him. From the good draw, he looks the goods to me. OK, what about some value? Of course, last week it got up at $9.70. Yeah, I'm not sure Booze Hound's going to get to, out to that sort of price on Saturday night, but if very bitter gets extremely short in the market, I reckon Booze Hound's a pretty decent betting proposition in the eighth race, so happy to write down race eight, number six. OK, no worries. Let's have a look at the quaddy as well. I'm going to start off pretty wide and go with Corborn Looney, Smart Valentino and include Gradence and Proven Impala as the value runners in the first leg. I'm going to take three in the second leg with Rock Pepper, Maya Karoma and Lux Change. I'm going to trim it up with Gowdy and Fun For All in the third leg and I come home with Booze Hound and Very Bitter. And I think $20 gets you around 41%. No worries at all. We'll have a look at that. I will follow you this week because of the success of last week. So good luck. Yeah, only as good as your last tip, Ben. So hopefully Saturday night we might be able to find a few more winners. Yeah, we hope so. We'll see you next time on Chasing the Dollar. This episode of Chasing the Dollar is proudly brought to you by Sporting Bet. There's no better bet than a sporting bet.